What's going on guys, Derek here with Fantasy Football Advice coming at you with another Fantasy Football video. Today we're going over the players that you really shouldn't be targeting in your drafts. It may not necessarily mean that you should avoid them in all situations, but where they're going right now in their ADP, these players either have too much risk, not enough upside, to constitute where they're being taken in drafts. If those players fell enough though, they could be players that you could have on your team, but you definitely shouldn't be going out of your way to draft them. Before we do get into the video though, stat of the day. Today's stat of the day, which quarterback led the league in the amount of touchdowns thrown on third down? Okay, so which quarterback threw more third down touchdowns than any other quarterback in the league? As a small hint, this quarterback threw nearly half of their total touchdowns on the season on just third down. So let us know who you think that player is, and we'll let you know who wins in tomorrow's video. And guys, the drafts are coming up. Some of you have already drafted, but if you haven't, consider getting the draft package that we offer on our website. This pass will also give you access to all of our in-season content, including waiver wire, trade targets, rankings, and more. So if you're interested in that, go to our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com, sign up and become a member today. But let's get over to the players that you really shouldn't be targeting. The first group of players that I want to talk about are those really risky early round picks. Melvin Gordon, Antonio Brown, Ezekiel Elliott and Todd Gurley. It shouldn't be very hard to get on the same page with this first player. It's Todd Gurley. He's currently going as the first pick in the second round, and that's crazy because there are a lot of really good receivers that are being drafted in that range. He's even being drafted ahead of Odell Beckham Jr., who we believe has the potential to be the wide receiver one. And if you ask me, he could score more fantasy points than Todd Gurley on his own, and that's crazy to think because wide receivers just don't put up the same type of numbers than running backs do, even at that high end of the position even though the receivers score less they're much more safe and with Todd Gurley you just can't expect him to have the same volume especially not with this injury so if we're expecting him to have a reduction in volume in order to pay off this draft price he's going to have to score a lot of touchdowns yes it's a strong offense but if he's not on the field will he be getting the same amount of receptions which is also something that made Todd Gurley so valuable we just don't know at this time if he's going to be on the field enough to perform at this level of the draft the players that are going around him right now are guaranteed while healthy to produce and you're taking a risk on a player who's guaranteed to have a reduction in volume and considering it's an injury that could lead to time to rest who's to say they don't shut him down early in the fantasy playoffs when you need him most in the late first early second we'd recommend grab one of those strong receivers Michael Thomas Julio Jones Odell Beckham maybe even two if you're confident with the running backs in the third round but if not and you really want a running back there's still Dalvin Cook Joe Mixon you have plenty of options no need to pay for the name value of Todd Gurley when you know he could lead to issues throughout the season the next player we're going to mention is another second round player he's actually the 11th pick in the second round it's Antonio Brown this is pretty typical behavior for Antonio Brown and now we're getting him in the second round at the 11th pick it doesn't seem like much of a discount if you're someone who's drafting him you better be ready for this type of stuff to occur during the season because when it did for the Steelers was when they were facing adversity he would complain about not getting the ball enough he would complain about the offense or the coaching staff just his regular antics and it would typically happen when things weren't going so good and now he's on the Oakland Raiders and the Raiders are in a tough division it's not going to be easy they're going Going to lose some games games that the Steelers would have won and I have a feeling that's when Antonio Brown is going to speak out it is not going to be easy and Antonio Brown is likely going to be the first player the media hears from and I just don't know if I would want to deal with that all season long if he was falling in the draft and I knew he was going to show up and play and perform I might be willing to take on that risk he's being taken ahead of players like Adam Thielen Keenan Allen those are really solid receivers that you know you can count on so for me no thanks up next, we have Melvin Gordon, who is falling into the third round, to be specific, the fourth pick in the third round, and we honestly can't recommend that you target him in that area. If he does fall, though, I can see him being an interesting prospect, but you can't afford to lose out on a very valuable pick. Now, I'm not saying that if he falls, you shouldn't draft him, because there is a stage where I believe Melvin Gordon will be of value. For me, it's a little bit further than the third round, and I'm not guaranteeing that he's not going to see the field. He may come back and be available to start the the season in which your gamble paid off he may come back halfway through the season but remember he has screwed over a lot of fantasy owners in the past so even if he does come back can he remain healthy we're unsure so don't think that by taking a shot on him you're getting a guaranteed thing there's players 
like David Montgomery going after him, Carrion Johnson, Stephon Diggs. If you want to take a shot, I can't blame you, but I can't recommend that you go out of your way to target him. If you really do want to take on the risk, I can understand it. But if you're taking him over players like Carrion Johnson, just a handful of picks before him, you're going to be making a mistake. Just don't reach on him, don't go out of your way to target him, and if you do get him, let him fall to you. Real quick, let's talk about Ezekiel Elliott, and his situation is pretty simple. It's a holdout. All you're going to have to do is follow the news come draft day. If he's been signed before or on draft day, I would recommend taking him as one of the first running backs off the board. If not, there's just no way you can spend that early pick on him. There's DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams, two of the safest and most consistent receivers in the league that are being drafted at the same price he is, which is still currently the fifth pick in the first round. And it's Ezekiel. Ezekiel Elliott, you already know there are people in your league that are going to be taking him that early, so he isn't going to fall to a place where it's worth the risk. With Melvin Gordon at least, you're risking a third round pick. Players like Josh Jacobs, players that don't have guaranteed production. In the first round, you pretty much know what you're going to get and the hit rate is extremely high and the ceiling is extremely high and you can't give that up for a shot in the dark. Just ask everybody who drafted Le'Veon Bell last season. I'm going to start with wide receivers, and the first one worth mentioning is Allen Robinson. And with Robinson, a lot of people remember the good old days when he was a top five fantasy receiver. He's also coming into his second year on an offense with a young quarterback, so there is a lot of things that you could say that you like about him. Even with those factors, he's just not a player worth targeting because he's on an offense that spreads the ball around. The volume won't be there. The consistency won't be there. Will he have solid end of season numbers for where he's going in drafts? Probably. I could see that happening, but it won't come through the form of weekly production, consistent touchdowns, and somebody who you're going to feel confident starting in your lineup each week. Those are the types of players that really damage your fantasy team because they put points up on your bench, and then you put them in your lineup, and they really disappoint you. In our projections, Robinson has a 20% target market share, and even with 20%, he's the 44th receiver, and considering he won't be consistent week over week, and what other wide receivers are going in that range, it's best not to target him. Up next is Marvin Jones and I'll be the first to admit I was pretty high on Jones to start the offseason but as it went on I just started to cool on him and at this point where he's going in drafts I'm not sure I'll have that many shares of him it may seem like a steal now that Golden Tate's out of town but most of those targets are going to go to Kenny Galladay I understand he's never needed volume to perform but he is going to need touchdowns and with a team that's focusing more on the run his end of season numbers are probably going to look solid, but when he gets his fantasy points, it's more than likely going to be in a handful of games, and if he's only getting three receptions, he's going to need to connect. If you're starting him and he doesn't connect, it could really hurt your fantasy team, and for that, I can't recommend targeting him. We're going to move over to running backs, and the first running back is Kenyon Drake of the Miami Dolphins. Like Jones, we've cooled off on Drake a bit, and the reason's simple. It really all comes down to Kalen Balazs. Originally, we expected expected Kenyon Drake to be somewhat of a workhorse and putting up 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns on such little volume he was a player that had a lot of upside even in a bad offense but now that he's potentially splitting work with Kalen Balaj, we could put ourselves in a situation where he will be wildly inconsistent on an offense that is likely bottom 10 and for that we don't recommend that you draft him the next running back is Jordan Howard of the Philadelphia Eagles and a lot of people get excited that he's on a strong offense yes that's that's true, but they're also an offense that uses a running back by committee approach. So the idea that he could potentially be a three down back is just unrealistic. He's not a good pass catcher, and while he may get first cracks at short yardage or goal line, in weeks he doesn't score, he's going to hurt your fantasy team. The Philadelphia Eagles also pride themselves on having an unpredictable offense, being creative, and having someone like Jordan Howard on the field pretty much is giving away their hand, so I could see situations where they don't put him in for that reason. If he's not getting receptions, and if that takes away from his volume, it's only going to hurt him more. There's just not enough upside and not a high enough floor for us to be interested in him. So he's a player you definitely shouldn't target. Next up is Darius Geis and also Adrian Peterson. And it's kind of like Jordan Howard where they're not going to get a lot of work in the receiving game. 
except the difference is these two players are likely going to be eating into each other's production. It's also not expected to be a strong offense. If Dwayne Haskins becomes the starter, they may be able to move the ball more efficiently, but if you're talking about two early down rushers on a bottom half offense and a lack of usage in the receiving game, it's a pass from us, but let's move over to quarterbacks. You know we don't like taking quarterbacks early, so a player like Patrick Mahomes is likely going to be going much too early for us to consider, but the first one you should really be avoiding is Andrew Luck. He was a top target for us last season, but as it stands today, he's injured, and the reports coming out of camp are not very good, so unless he plays in preseason or we hear that he's fully recovered, there is no way you can draft him where he's currently being drafted, and there are just so many quarterback options this season, even if he wasn't injured, you could still get better value later. The next quarterback, Russell Wilson, and yes, Russell Wilson has been one of the best fantasy quarterbacks for a long time, and last season, he performed well. Now he has DK Metcalf, and he knows he can trust Tyler Lockett. The only problem is, he was extremely efficient last season, and we cannot expect that to continue this year. If there was a sign that the passing volume could increase throughout the year, I would definitely be more interested, but with him not rushing as much as he used to, and the offense committed to running the ball more than any team in football, you can't draft him and expect him to perform like he has in previous seasons. That's going to do it for quarterbacks, and there really aren't any tight ends that you need to 100% avoid. The tight end position itself does not need a ton of volume to outperform where you're taking them in drafts, so we're not going to recommend that you avoid them, even if we personally aren't going to target them. So, that's going to do it for this video. If you did enjoy, please hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. We thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.